Hey guys, 22 Plinkster here. In my hands, I have the new Smith & Wesson Victory. Let me shoot it a few times, I'll tell you a little bit more about it. This little pistol will shoot. Unfortunately, I do not have a cameraman today. And so, I'm gonna be trying to stay in one spot loading these magazines up. Now, what I'm loading up right here is some Federal Champion ammunition uh, just the bulk ammo that i like to shoot the most uh, 36 grain jacketed hollow points nothing special about it and this pistol i have been looking forward to doing the review for for a long long time let me shoot it a few more rounds and i'll tell you what i mean by that You see, I've had this particular pistol for about eight months. And you're probably saying, well, Plankster, it was just announced last week that Smith & Wesson is introducing this pistol. And yes, uh, see, Smith & Wesson contacted me about eight months ago and said, hey, you're the rimfire guy. Won't you try this pistol out and see how you like it? Well, I did. And when I first got the pistol, I shot it and I shot it a bunch. And I like it. I like everything about it. Now, let me get into some details with, about the pistol. One, it's got a stainless steel barrel, which is nice, okay? I like a good heavy barrel on a target pistol. Two, it's got a stainless steel frame, which also makes it give it some more hep. And also, it has a stainless steel slide. And you're probably thinking to yourself, well, why do you want the pistol to be so heavy? Well, let me shoot it a few more times, and I'll tell you what I mean by that. Let's go over across the hill. Six inch plate at about 50 to 55 yards. Pull low on that last one. Well, you see, you want a heavy pistol when it comes to a target pistol. Smith & Wesson already has the 22 a which I've owned several of those pistols in the past. I really like the 22 a but the 22 a in my opinion, is an entry-level 22 pistol. In my opinion, it is not this pistol by no means. And they also, Smith & Wesson, has the Model 41. Well, you know the problem with the 41 to a lot of people is the price, but you get what you pay for. If you haven't seen my review on the Model 41, Go look at it. Uh, the Model 41 is to be, uh, you know, to a lot of people, you know, one of the nicest 22 semi-automatic pistols ever made. The Victory has a five and a half inch barrel, 5.5 inches, okay? Which I like that. Uh, most target pistols come in six inches or they come in four inches. Uh, the five and a half is a good um, medium to that. Now, you're probably already screaming. Why in the world does this pistol not come threaded? Well, this is the standard model. This particular model retails MSRP for about $409. It does come with the option of being threaded for $20 more. So the MSRP on a threaded model will be about $429. And if you gotta have one in camo, they make that also. I think those MSRP for about $459. Now there are a few cool things about this particular pistol that I really like. If you saw it on Facebook when I uh, released it, the pictures of it, uh, several people made the comment of saying, hey, it looks like a Ruger uh, Mark series pistol and a Browning Buckmark had a baby, and henceforth, the victory. Well, you're kind of right. You know, the first time I saw it, I thought it was a good uh, rep uh, representation of just that term. It looks like the baby of a Ruger and a Browning Buckmark. What, I actually think that's quite a compliment because the Ruger Buckmark, it's been millions of pistols sold, and all, uh, excuse me, the Browning Buckmark, been millions of uh, pistols sold, and so um, have the Ruger Mark series pistol. And so they took the best of attributes from both pistols and came up with their own design. Now, this pistol is, in my opinion, set apart from those uh, particular pistols for one reason. Let me shoot it and I'll tell you what that one reason is. The one reason is you can actually take this pistol apart 
in about 20 seconds. All right, if you've ever tried to take apart a Ruger Mark Series pistol or a Browning uh, Buckmark, you know it can be complicated. Uh, I remember the first time I took mine apart and it was not pretty. With this particular one, you can take out one screw right here in the bottom of the barrel and the barrel and the top, uh, the, or the whole upper of this pistol comes off and then you can disassemble the slide and, and the firing pin mechanism and everything else. It's very easy, very easy to take apart. So I really, really like that about this particular pistol. Now, this pistol does have fiber octave sights. I'm not a huge fan of fiber octave sights. However, on this particular pistol, the fiber octave sights are just big enough that it doesn't, uh, it doesn't blind you when you're trying to put it on your target. The big problem with fiber octave sights, a lot of companies make them too big. And what happens is on a sunny day like it is today, it can blind you and you can't do uh, you know, great precision shooting with huge fiber octave sights. But these sights, I really like them. They are target sights. These sights are adjustable for windage and elevation which is always good. Now this, like I said, this is considered a target pistol. Um, and I really enjoy it. I really enjoyed shooting it. I have put probably in the past eight months of owning this pistol, probably about 2,500 rounds through it. And I can say it will shoot. Um, now you're probably asking the question, how is the trigger? Well, I'll tell you what the trigger is like. The trigger is butter. Uh, <laughs> I like the trigger a lot. You know, when I first, heard they were coming out with the pistol and they contacted me to send it to me and everything. Um, I was worried about the trigger, the trigger because to me, the trigger is one of the most important parts of a target pistol. Uh, a lot of pistols that claim to be target pistols, uh, the triggers are horrible. Um, the first thing I wanna do is rip out the trigger, but this trigger, it, it's, it's got a two-stage trigger and it breaks very, very clean. Once you get to that backstop, you barely pull it, the, the pistol will fire. Um, like I said, it's probably about three, three and a half pounds, but the trigger, uh, the backstop is also adjustable. So that's a good little feature about this particular pistol uh, that comes straight from the factory. It does have an adjustable uh, trigger stop. So let me shoot it a few more times. Let's get that dueling tree there. My OCD was getting to me and seeing those two paddles on the right hand side. Now, it is a very, very good shooter, like I've mentioned several times before. Now, in my opinion, if I could change one particular thing about this pistol, it would be the grips, okay? Now, the grips, they do fit my hands. Now, I've got huge, huge Sasquatch hands, okay? I've, I've mentioned that in several videos. I'm six foot six. I was a basketball player. I can palm two basketballs, like, you know, it's pretty easy. I've got really, really big hands, and the grip is just kind of small to me, in my opinion. Now, they do have good checkering on the back and good stippling on the side, so you can get a good purchase on it, and the magazine release is exactly where John Moses Browning intended it to be, right here on the side. But that's all good, but in my opinion, this pistol would be, uh, you know, in a league of its own if the grips were different. Now, saying that, this pistol is brand new. It's not even available to the, uh, to the public when me making this video. There's gonna be companies that's gonna make aftermarket grips for this particular pistol. I, I know it without a shadow of doubt, but it's not that the triggers are bad, it's just my hands are so big, and it's just, I don't know, they're just a little small in my opinion. Now, however, to the normal person, um, you know, young shooter, the normal size man, um, and a female shooter, it's going to fit your hands perfect. All right, let me load another magazine up with some Federal Champion, and I will go inside, and I'm going to show you how to take this pistol apart, and I'm going to show you, in my opinion, one of the neatest things that you can do with this particular pistol. Um, a lot of people don't know it, and they're one of my favorite rimfire companies in the world is Vacortson. Well, Smith & Wesson teamed up with Vacortson and they make match barrels for this sucker already. So let me, uh, let me shoot this up and I'll go inside and I'll finish out the video. All right, what can I shoot? Let's go across the creek again.
Unamas. All right. Let's just go right there. That's good enough for me. So let's go inside and I'll finish out the review. All right, I've decided to do the takedown section of this pistol outside. I think the lighting is going to be a little bit better. So first things first, let's make sure the magazine is out and the pistol is unloaded. As you can see, it is unloaded. Now, what you want to do is take your Allen wrench, okay? And you put right underneath here, right underneath the barrel, okay? There's a little set screw. Take this screw out. Of course, turning it counterclockwise. And this is what's going to, you know, set this pistol apart from the other pistol, the 22 class of guns out there that are just extremely hard to take apart. And all you do is simply lift up on the pistol, or on the barrel on the upper section, and there you go. It's done. It's taken apart. All right. You can then at that point clean everything inside that you want to clean. Now this pistol is kind of dirty because I just got through um, shooting it quite a bit. You take the slide out and that's pretty much it. You can access everything in here. So if you want to spray some ballastol in there and, and clean, I would recommend probably get some Q-tips um, for the little fine parts. Uh, clean the feeding ramp real good. That's pretty much it. And the slide. You know, make sure it's good and clean and you can spray it down some. And that's the good thing about stainless is you can just take this and wipe it down and you're good to go. So right here is your spring and inside of here is your, um, is your uh, firing pin. Um, I guess this is your components to, uh, to hold all your firing pin and everything else in. So I'm not going to take this apart. I've taken it apart before. Um, I'm not gonna take it apart outside because I don't want this spring to shoot off But you know you simply just press down on that spring uh, Right here on the back side and press it down it pops out and once it pops out you can clean the spring and you can also um, This little bitty device there that keeps the firing pin um, Secure inside there and you know you're good to go. Just make sure the face and everything is, is good and clean um, But yeah, I've taken it down. I just don't want to take it down any farther than this I just don't want to lose the spring and it go uh, flying out in the leaves. So, all right, so we've got the pistol completely apart. Now, let me show you something really neat. Um, this pistol comes with a Picatinny rail for the top, okay? And what you do is you simply just undo this one screw and this whole rear sight comes off, okay? And then you simply just mount the rail on top of here, okay? Well. For people who shoot in competition, this is very important. Um, you know, if they want to go with a red dot or your eyes aren't good enough to see the fiber octave. So this is, this is a really, really interesting part. You see the same Allen wrench that you took down uh, the pistol with already. There is a simple lockdown screw right here that's holding the barrel in place. So you can take this apart, this barrel off of here, like so. The barrel just slides right off, okay? Let's set this aside. Now, this is what I wanted to show you. Check that out. This is a Vakortsen match grade barrel. Now, you know I'm a huge fan of Vakortsen. Now, this particular barrel, I don't know if you can buy it through Vakortsen or you have to buy it through Smith & Wesson, um, but this barrel is an option for the victory. Now, this brake also comes off like so. That's how good the welds are. Um, I mean, in the machining, not the wells, excuse me, the machining of this barrel is you can't even see, you know, you can't even see the line. I had this barrel for about three months and never even knew that it was, uh, it was threaded on there because the lines match up so good on it. So, but you can take this off if you want to use a suppressor. Um, and then how you get this barrel on there. Well, before that goes, this, this is one particular barrel from Bocorton. Here is the other barrel. Now this is a carbon fiber barrel. Now this one is also threaded that you can put you a suppressor or some form of uh, muzzle device on the end of it. But this is a really, really nice, really, really nice uh, carbon fiber barrel from Bacortson. So yeah. And of course these are match grade barrels guys. And when you, if you do purchase these Bacortson, uh barrels for the victory, be sure to only shoot 40 grain match ammo um, out of it. Well, it doesn't have to be match. It could be just standard velocity. Um, or match velocity. Usually 
going between 1050 and, and 1100 feet per second because like I said, these are match barrels. You don't want to shoot a lot of jacketed um, ammo through it. So you want these barrels to last you a long time and to keep their accuracy. So what I'm going to do is here, I'm going to put this Vakortsen barrel on. So you slip, simply slide the barrel inside of here. Okay, make sure it's good and tight. You take the same screw that came out and I always like to turn it uh, counterclockwise before starting it, making sure that those threads line up good and even. Now here is the critical part. You do not want to over tighten this, but you do want to get it snug, okay? You just don't want to bear down on it and break this screw or break the Allen wrench, but you do want it really, really snug, okay? So that's that. Simply insert your slide. Let's get it the right way here. Well, I did have it the right way. There we go. Like so. Put it towards the, the rear of the pistol first. You can kind of hear it locked down. You take that one screw. Go counterclockwise a few times. There we go. Make sure it's seated down in there good. And you simply tighten it up. Okay, once you get it tightened there. Now, again, do not over tighten this. You want to get it good and snug, but don't break your Allen wrench, you know, trying to over tighten it. I, like I said, I fired 2,500 rounds through um, the original configuration with this, with this uh, barrel on it. This is the, the factory barrel. And of course, you know, it has a sight. The only thing about the Vakortsen sights, they do not have a front sight. So if you go with the Vakortsen barrel, you must, 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 you know, take this uh, rail, put it on the top, and you know put you some kind of red dot magnif uh, red dot sight on there with or without magnification of course that's your choice but this is an awesome little setup uh, this particular pistol with the Vakortsen barrels will drive nails the factory barrel is not bad at all the factory barrel was very accurate but with this Vakortsen setup it balances the pistol just perfect and I think we have a winner well guys thank you very much for watching and I'm probably going to do a couple more videos here on this victory you know like i said this is a brand new pistol right on the market uh, but for the most part i have been very very pleased with it thank you very much for watching until next time y'all be safe and keep plinking